finally finished drinking. He has finally finished drinking, and now okay. he's going to go and piss on your floor somewhere. He's going to take a crap or something. Right? <laughs> like, like T's got a tower around there that he was like, "Don't let anyone knock it over. Don't let the dogs." And I was like, "Well, the Hoover's going around. Oh, no. The little furrigan was going around. He's like, turn it off. Turn it off. He's on the toilet earlier." <laughs> so insight for people. We've already started by insight for people that I sometimes send to our Studio Eight Four group chat audio audios of of T and I talking on the toilet. <laughs> yes. Have you listened to any of them? They're yes. like quite long and he just goes on. And yeah, he suddenly had a revelation while sat on the toilet earlier that the the Furrigan Rumba Hoover might knock over the blocks. <gasps> and he's like, Tell you no, 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 <laughs> turn it off. <laughs> so I was like turning it off, sending it to go back. And it's like, oh <laughs> Oh that's genius. Oh bless it. So him. cute. So yeah, cute. But at that age, towers are the most important thing. It's impressive. You should go around and look. Oh I will go and yeah. have a look and we'll if try and get a picture dogs of it. As well. I've got a picture. Oh, I can show you the picture. Ooh, so yeah. in case the dogs picture. Picture. Oh I posed it took a photo in case the dogs knocked it over and I could do a sneaky little rebuild of it. Nice. There he is. He built it himself. It's quite cute. That's very impressive. And when you open up, it's got me, him, and mummy inside. Oh, no. Nice. Three that he put in. There's like, my he needs you. There's my knee. put the roof on. Yeah, very cute. Oh, that's very cute. Okay, well, this is the Untitled Trek show, not the Rob talking about his son on the toilet show. No, that's another week. Before we get started, we've got some admin to do. Elephant in the room. What happened last week? That last episode. So, Rob has <laughs> learnt his lesson about making edits on an SD card before copying them. So, yeah. in the future, Rob, your workflow goes like this. SD card goes in. Mm-hmm. You copy the raw files. You don't change anything yep. to your hard drive. You then take SD card out and you go, I protect this with my soul. Put it to one side and then change all the names. And... I would normally do that. And for some reason, that week, I was just, I don't know, if we, maybe I just I felt it was off because it was doing it so early because we recorded super early, didn't we? Like we did a because week I was going away on holiday. So yeah. we needed to do it the week before. Now, I'll be honest though, what you created was so much more entertaining than us <laughs> talking about Picard for the second <laughs> half. I really didn't mind. I know we, we we had some really good points we brought up about Picard. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. Um, and maybe we'll talk about them in the future. But what you created was just fucking beautiful. I loved every second of that. I'm glad you liked it. I hope everyone else did. It was stressful. I'm Because sure I it felt was. so guilty that I... It was 22 minutes of audio footage. And you'd offered, like, on two occasions that we could redo it. And I was just like, I just don't think it would work. I'm glad we didn't because people will have... Yes, we would have put uh, Valentino in saying, oh dear, something's gone wrong and this is a re-record of what they previously did. And you just don't get that same energy. You don't get the same flow. It would have mm. felt very different to what we had done on the night. So in the end, I'm kind of glad you said no to that. Yeah. Because, yeah, you're right. I don't think it would have worked. But the bit where we both go on about the noise in the background, that was legitimate. There was a noise. And there it's was a, toy. a noise. It's, so what it is... No, it wasn't. It was uh, your vacuum. Oh, yeah. The vacuum got stuck and it was beeping. It was... But also what you can hear on occasions, you hear a... In the background. Oh, okay. That's a Play-Doh dinosaur oh yes you said that makes a noise and it's gone funny oh. <laughs> and it just makes a noise on its own so Ooh. you can hear. so there, you'll hear a, a glass smashing noise i added that yes but our reaction is the genuine reaction which i think why it works it worked, quite well it worked yeah. really well <laughs> it, was it was the us. best acting we've ever done it's <laughs> <Yeah>. not acting <laughs> exactly it was legitimate <laughs> so yeah i long story short i changed the name of the mm. files on the sd card before moving them and then i thought i selected every one and but somehow didn't select one of the ones in the middle i cannot tell you how i didn't do it because i would either do select all or drag mm. and grab them all and they're in order so i don't know how i got the two after it and not that one in the middle well what i don't understand is why it was deleted from the card either well i copied them yeah. And put them all there, and then I deleted them from the card. I actually oh, deleted them from right. the card. Yeah. You hadn't sold me that. I know, because but... I don't know what I, I just kind of like was just doing it, and then off I went. You never delete from the card. Yeah. I've, I've got to say, I have never deleted a card. Mm. What happens is I do the whole edit, and then the card just gets put back in the bag. And then the next time we record, I put the card 
in the recorder and hit format then. Yeah. It's so the, just it's, in case something goes right there. Yeah. It's literally the first time I've ever done it. First time I've ever renamed them on there. First time I've ever deleted them off. Because I don't. I just copy, paste, and then I and go off and do it. it'll be the last. It'll be the last, yeah. I'll <laughs> no, be really, it, like, sure. It happens, Dan. It's, I know there's, like, people out there that would get pissy with each other. I don't get the point of that. Mm. Shit happens. We tried our best to get it back. And, yeah, it was really weird. All I could think of was because you'd renamed them on the card... Yeah. that had done something to the file table on the card because when I was recovering it, it was saying, oh, no, this folder's really good. You can recover it, no problem. And then recovering it, it then would change to yellow and go, mm, no, it's not so good. And then listening to it, it would you'd think, oh, are we going to get away with this? And then all of a sudden it would be, yeah, hello. Yeah. Ah, like, oh, no. That's yeah. fucks. <laughs> yeah, that's fucks. That's exactly the experience I had. We must be we're using the same recover. Uh, no, I used um oh god, what is it called? I used a different one on um Mac OS. Oh. That's all command line, but uh But we got the same result. Mine, same result. Mine exactly the exactly same. Exactly the same result. Disk drill, that's the one I use. Yeah, so it meant that because with the shit show stuff, I'd planned two episodes before Christmas. Because there's stuff that we want to do at Christmas. I'm not spoiling it. But no. I needed to get the plot there. And I needed two episodes to do it. But things that come out in that shit show, for anyone that's bothered, the stuff with with Adam's character uh, was our plan for a long time, wasn't it? It was. We were going to have him as actually not be the, the whipping boy, but actually he was like this super intelligent agent guy. Yes. It was really kind of... At one point, he was going to be the super baddie. You've, we'd have heard the Ferengis talk about the broker. Mm -hmm. And at the time I wrote that, that was going to be Adam's character. Or in fact, a long time ago, we even decided, were toying with him being a certain godlike character, didn't we? Yeah, we had, he was always going to be the something. But then we eventually, after we really enjoyed those two um, oh, yes. agents, that was, I was like, okay, we've got to do something with this. And then that's why... Adam became this thing, but it was always going to be something. It just sped it massively along. <laughs> yeah, but you know what? Sometimes that's for a, a, a good reason. And actually, yeah. it's lined us up nicely with being ready to do something for Christmas, which we weren't expecting to do, which we are now going to do. So, yeah, yeah no spoilers, but it has actually lined up quite nicely. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah, sorry about last week, but I think it was quite good in the end, really. It happened. It was phenomenal. Enter authorization code. Right, as usual, what have you been watching? Well, I was going to say, we've got kind of another thing in the room. What have we both been watching? Not Discovery. <laughs> oh, yeah, not Discovery. Okay, yeah, slight change of plan. Neither of us got round to watching Discovery. And I so, was it yesterday I sent a voice note to you saying, yeah, like, so, I've not been that fussed about I know that watching... Was today. Oh, yeah, I've not been that fussed about watching an episode I know I don't like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so we've had a little play. So we'll tell you about that in a moment. What have I watched this week? I'm not going to say not much, because I have been watching quite a bit, but sci-fi-wise, the only thing that's probably of note is I finally got around to seeing Alien Romulus. After having it oh. booked... Kay had an accident with her water bottle and it was her favourite water bottle and basically the long short of it is Nanny handed it to her. She thought she had it. Nanny thought she had oh, it. Gosh. So she dropped it and it smashed the bottom out of the water bottle, destroyed. Oh, no. And she had this really stiff upper lip, really good girl, got in the car, drove home from Nanny's and said, oh, you're being very quiet, are you okay? It was my favourite water bottle. No. Was it had like then, a pattern with it or something? No, it was just this big, chunky pink water bottle that's like 1.5 litres and she'd just grown very attached to it because she, we tell her she's got to drink a lot of water and it was big, which meant she only needed to refill it once most days mm -hmm. and she could see how much she'd drunk and anyone that's vaguely neurospicy will understand why yeah. that becomes an important thing. I so obviously it. I was like, oh, crap. My film's in 30 minutes. I'd scheduled to get you home, get you into bed, and then get straight on the road and make it just as maybe the ads are playing. No, it's dad point time. Right, let's go to Tesco and see if we can... I couldn't find one that she wanted anyway, and we ended up buying it on Amazon, so it came the next day. But that's why I then missed it. So I then booked it for the next night instead, and I'm so glad I did. Yeah. It was... It wasn't perfect. Mm -hmm. I am going to do a bonus episode for the Variety Show 
where I just walk and talk about it. And it will be full of spoilers. So if you don't want to know about it, it's probably not the one you should listen to. And I'm not going to do too many spoilers here. In fact, I'm not going to do any spoilers Yeah, don't here. do any spoilers here. All I've got to say about it is the scenery and the design mm-hmm. of the world was perfect. Straight out of the 79 movie in the 80s film. So straight out of Alien and Aliens. Unfortunately, they tried to do fan service. Mm-hmm which just was not required. And there's one point in the film that's just like, why did you even do that? That is so cheesy and unre- just not required yeah. at all. And the last 15 minutes is a complete jump the shark. Oh. Which is a shame because the rest of it up until that point is really good. Really, really good. It feels not quite a perfect sequel to alien and prequel to aliens but it definitely didn't feel like it it didn't not feel like it didn't belong if god there's so many double negatives in that (laughs) it felt like it belonged that that would actually be the the right way to say shit like that it felt like it belonged and yeah i think that's all i can really it felt like it belonged and the thing is they even tried really hard to kind of tie in prometheus and covenant Mm -hmm. into it as well which kind of leads to the jumping the sharp bit at the end and weirdly it also kind of almost fan service he sort of steals a chunk from resurrection as well really yeah it's all a a little bit odd but i would watch it i'm gonna watch it again i'm probably gonna add it to my collection of the dvd so i've got all of them um is it the best absolutely no way no way near but is it worth seeing? A hundred percent, yes. I was going to say, did you go into it expecting a certain thing from it, or did you were you quite no, open minded? I had to go in open minded because if I went in there expecting something as good as Alien Aliens, I would have walked out there disappointed. Mm-hmm. And knowing what I've seen now, I would have been a hundred percent disappointed. But going in there with not an open heart, but the open mind to say, I know this is not going to be anywhere near the original two films. But with Ridley Scott behind it, there's a good chance it's going to be salvageable or good. Mm -hmm. I walked away happy. But if I'd gone in there thinking this is going to be a phenomenal entry to the Alien series, I would have come away disappointed, just like I did from Prometheus and from Covenant. Yeah. As I hate... Well, again, hate's a strong word. Prometheus, I've gone back and watched again several times and i can just about kind of accept it it's not terrible covenant on the other hand it's just it just wasn't required gotta say i've seen them don't remember very much about them other than fast bender yeah i mean covenant really just didn't feel like it was required prometheus it could have been so much better as it is and tying it in with alien romulus actually they did a good job and helped make that story matter a little bit more is romulus the ship so romulus so it's a a whole um mythology from roman times right romulus and remus right and they suckled at the um Suckled at a wolf, I believe the story is. The teat of a wolf. The teat of a wolf. And um, the space station involved, half of it is called Romulus, the other half is Remus. Okay. And again, I can't go into too much because it does kind of spoil it for you. Um, Suffice to say, the ad doesn't ruin it, surprisingly. It's actually left quite a lot out for once. Mm -hmm. Um, So yeah, no, I, I would go into it, but that's pretty much all of the sci-fi stuff i've seen any monkeys in it no monkeys (laughs) how supernatural season three episode eight i checked it we were literally watching it before you go in (laughs) and it was a really good episode it was oh it was a christmas one um a supernatural christmas it was so it's so that exists yeah it it sounds such a bullshit name so it was all about uh, the two, two, um, the brothers, yes, yeah, so right. These two brothers and they kill monsters. These two, uh, Celtic, Celtic, you know, that kind of old gods. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. 
and about the old laws of Christmas. And yeah, yeah they uh, you'd sacrifice people to these gods and they give you a mild, mild weather at Christmas. Weather. And they're, they're so well acted by these two older people being really kind of like um, 60s slash 70s perfect home people okay yeah. it, was, it was just beautifully acted and then they I'll have to the, watch the brothers one. get tortured get like a fingernail pulled oh. off oh it's so grim because it's such a stark contrast between the two elements of the show of like really hyper kind of gory violence yeah and proper super fun christmas like like right there happening at the same time oops just bang the mic yeah good episode yeah, we're watching a lot of Supernatural still. <laughs> I have been playing a few games. Okay. So I've got I them. haven't I haven't turned the PlayStation on or the Xbox on in three weeks. The Xbox went on the other day just to st- I wanted to update it. That was the only reason. I've just I'll, le- I'll leave one on that weird standby mode they created so it, it stays up to date. In fact, the Xbox probably hasn't been on for a couple of months. I turned that off on mine because they're in a cupboard now. Ah, so they get the, toasty. And they'll get too hot. So like, if I play them, I leave the doors on it open. So, I, you know, I was playing Elden Ring. Yeah. Um, I've stopped playing that a bit. It's so stressful. I absolutely <laughs> think the, the game is fantastic. But I am not good enough. And there's no amount that I can practice and practice that will get me good enough now. I think I'm just past that point. Does that make sense? Yeah, I know what you mean. I can't see the moves coming from the enemies. I just can't judge. You're not good enough at working out the patterns. Not quick enough. Mm -hmm. I just I want to be able to sit down and if I play a game for an hour, feel like I've progressed. Whereas I can be fighting a boss on there for four nights. Oh, and when your four nights is across two weeks, yeah, I can't do that. I just it takes it away. You know, people complain online about oh, we don't put easy modes in our in our souls like games like no for me can you put an easy mode in elden ring <laughs> like so i if i had it on the computer yeah i'd put a mod on so i had infinite health it's funny you say about computers i'm genuinely at that point that i'm almost tempted to get rid of the consoles and go back to pc gaming mm. there's so little kind of appeared on the gaming market that i would like to buy and i looked at the back catalogue for both of them for game pass and for whatever the playstation one is called gold and there's just nothing i really want on either of them to be honest and i was just thinking you're just sitting there not doing anything well i need to cancel my xbox subscription because i'm not played it it's like yeah i've got access to all these games but i can just when i want to play one just start the sub up again it's not like i'm gonna lose anything because i haven't played it in probably I don't even remember. Well, this is it. This months is why, and months. But and this months. is why I'm thinking: Do I get rid of it and just go for a, a gaming PC? Mm. But then I'd be like, mm. then I'd have to go and get out the top graphics, and I wouldn't be able to stop myself trying to max it out. Yeah. And then in six months' time, we all know what happens. It's now Absolutely. at the bottom of the pile, and it's oh, I've got to improve it, don't I? I'm not going to get rid of my consoles because I collect them. So. I won't be trading a console in or just selling one. Once I've got one, it's my, I keep it. Mm. Uh, but I start, I moved from that and then I started playing a really good game, which I've paused because we're going to stream. Oh, and that's, yes, thank goodness you're this. here. Crikey, look at the size of this lad's Mara. And he's got a huge cut. And it's so, it's right up our alley. Honestly, it is like, <laughs> it's so funny. I played it for about half an hour. Saw it originally from um, What's what's Wrong With Wolfie. Mm-hmm. Had it. They've reviewed it. And I read their review and I was like, oh, this looks really cool. I like the art style, very cartoony. Well, it's by the same people that did the Untitled Goose Game, which was one of my yeah. favourite games of a couple of years ago. Yeah, we loved that, didn't we? Yeah. We spoke about it on the podcast a little bit. Possibly, yeah. I remember we recorded one night and then watched... Um soviet womble play. yeah that, oh god that's so funny him with his additional it. animations we finished the podcast really late and then we watched like a half an hour youtube video <laughs> of a guy playing it <laughs> soviet womble's hilarious by the way if anyone's into watching gaming youtubers so so yes by them it's all like heavy i think it's yorkshire accent it and is you can it's, pick it's yorkshire you can turn it on or off so okay, I turn yeah. it on, obviously. Like the very first thing it comes up with is that it says something to you. I don't remember now. And then you've got two options. 
why the one on the on the left which i'm assuming is like yes is written in slang right and the one on the right is written in normal english so of course i'm (laughs) going to take the slang one so i don't know what difference that makes but it make at the moment everyone talks beautifully and it's hilarious so the only things you can do is jump and slap yes that's your interaction with the entire world so you want to talk to someone you want to slap them on the ass <laughs> there was a there was a not going too much so i want to spoil it i went up walked past a fence and there was a little hole in the fence and someone was just pushing pushing sausages, sausages. <laughs> <laughs> and i was like this That's, is brilliant oh no i've run out of sausages <laughs> yeah i'll go, I'll get, go some. get some more <laughs> yeah it's so funny just these cute little things so i was like and then you said that you wanted to I was like, okay right i'm gonna pause this oh, no, you, I, you, I, don't, I don't want to get too far so i want to be able to see bit i've i've got enough in it that i know i can explain to you what's going on right and then okay. we can enjoy watch like Fine. a couple of hours so i think together. we need to make that soon then because i don't want you waiting on a game just because i've asked you to so let's make that soon yeah. then because that's that's a hundred percent worth it and then i've finally started playing final fantasy rebirth properly now finally finally final 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 finally final and what you'll notice ladies and gents is that that game that we used to play lots and lots doesn't feature in our lives anymore. Oh dear, I promised myself I wouldn't do this. I said, Valentino, you are a strong and beautiful woman. You don't need to get involved. Live your life. Just stick to the script. Get your money. But these two, they had to drone on about fucking hell divers for a full 11 minutes on a Star Trek podcast. A Star Trek podcast, I tell you. Ugh. Look, do yourself a favor. Skip ahead. You don't need this in your life. I know I don't. No, I logged in a couple of days ago, collected 150 medals. Yeah. So, and then I turned it off. I didn't actually even spend them. I should have spent them because if I log in again, I've probably got another 100. It will max you out to 250 and then you won't get any. The problem is they fucked about too much with it. And for me, it got boring. That I was enjoying our sessions, and then we turn it on, and suddenly my weapon loadout that I was really super comfortable with and had fun with is ruined. Mm-hmm. Um, we have exactly the same missions going on that we had at the very beginning of the game still going on, and just botched weapons to work with instead. And it's just, why do you keep doing this? Thing is, if anyone ever played with me, they'll know I loved the flamethrower. I chose every. I had napalm grenades. Yeah. I had the napalm um, bomb drop thing. I used the flamethrower all the time. I loved the fire. Then they did that massive update, and the war bomb that came with it was a fire one. I was like, oh, this is going to be so good. So now I could have a sidearm, which is a flamethrower. Yeah. So I could have the big flamethrower, a sidearm a flamethrower, and an assault rifle, which is a flamethrower. So every single one of my weapons could be a flamethrower. Brilliant. They nerfed fire. So barely does it. You can't damage Bile Titans with it. Nope. Um, it barely does any damage now, even if you hit a charger from the rear with fire. And then they did another update, and it broke the flamethrower even further to the point where everyone doesn't use it anymore because it's useless. And like, well, the one weapon that I loved more than anything, I now can't use, you know, and they they made all the really good guns have less magazines. So I feel like I've got to have the pack on my back. So then that stops me, you know, use it like using other things, other stratagems I might want to do. And yeah, I just they've made it on a shit engine. We spoke about it before It's an engine that is really old. They don't support it anymore it's by it's like autodesk maya if you yeah, remember that it's... software it's that engine for that and just like i wish you just made it in unreal unreal 4 or something and then you could have upgraded it to 5 and it would have looked brilliant it wouldn't have changed anything and but things would just work and it would be supported and every time you make one change it's not going to make some catastrophic change that you could butterfly effect further down the road on something that has got no relation to what you've changed. Yeah, I mean, I'm just looking here at an article from about 11 hours ago, allegedly, on Games Radar, which mm-hmm. I didn't realise was still a thing. Um, they've now confirmed that they are building a test server. They said they, they already had one, I'm pretty sure. 
Well, the game's directors has finally confirmed that a test server is being worked on at Arrowhead, and for the users they invite, a NDA will be forced upon them if they wish to take part yeah, in the test, luck. which is understandable uh, because they're sick of things being leaked. Um, but what I was actually looking for was the article that I read about three or four days ago, and this has only got a little bit of it, which is elsewhere in the Discord question and answer, Pilestead, which is one of the lead developers i think or the creator yeah. and whatever said that criticism of helldivers 2 was perfectly valid of late following a patch earlier this month that actively nerfed fire-based weapons again mm -hmm. which players were absolutely loving up until then the worst thing would have been if we fucked up and no one cared Pilestead added so at least it's not all bad news then no but it has stopped a huge number of people i know including us from playing it now because I'm sick of these updates. And I know they say, oh, we're building a test server. Great. What if you've got the wrong people testing it? Yeah. That's the problem, isn't it? You can't just go about... You, unless their weapon is truly bugged. So let's say you had the flamethrower and they didn't realise that if you used three canisters in a row, suddenly you blew up and got launched across the map. Fine. That is a bug fix it don't go and do an update and go right we've adjusted all the weapons to make them fairer no if that's how you've put it out that's how you've put it out leave it alone it's, it's not like we're playing against other players it's because it's a very vocal small minority of people at the at the very top who won't let you in their group unless you bring the exact perfect weapons whereas the majority like the 90 percent of the rest of us who just want to pick what excuse me whatever gun we want well that's the we and are... just make them all but apparently apparently on the box i mean i've got it digitally so i haven't seen the box it says something like uh play with overpowered weapons and feel like a god it says something like that mm. and like it hasn't felt like that since launch no They've absolutely taken that away from us. Mm. Um, what's the harm in making the weapons overpowered? But what's the harm in giving us more ammunition? But that's what I'm saying. If it was PvP, fine, I understand that. I hate it, and that's one of the reasons I stopped playing COD. Mm. I hated day one being, right, brilliant. I've just about afforded a new game. And mm. let's not lie, they're expensive, and people need to take that into consideration. It's not like, oh, I'm going to buy this game, and... That's pocket money. It's not pocket money. Some of us have to save up money for that sort of thing, even yeah. as adults. So I've ordered COD, let's say. I sit down and I play it. Really fancy a multiplayer game. Day one, servers have been live for, what, an hour? And you walk in and immediately you get destroyed because there's 70 million other kids out there who haven't got money worries, have bought all the day one DLC mm -hmm. and been given lots of bonus super powerful weapons that mm -hmm. pisses me off i understand that but helldivers 2 is not pvp no the computer's not sat there going it's unfair yeah. it's bullying me no it's a mm. fucking computer it doesn't care how strong the weapons are and you find it too easy go up a difficulty it had seven difficulty levels which exactly what we did mm. we all started i remember me and you were really chuffed going around going oh look we we got 10 samples on this map that's really cool yeah then a month later it's like we're playing the difficulty level. we've got five samples oh, i've got three super samples wiki i'm well happy with yeah because we moved up and it didn't detract from the game for us we felt like we were at that stage but now the weapons are completely nerfed you want to go back to the early levels, but you can't go back to the early levels if you want to progress your ship or get further weapons yeah. because you can't get the things you need. Mm. But then if you go to the levels for the things that you need, it's absolutely miserable. Yeah. I remember the last time we played, it was not fun. What do you remember they... We were really stressed because it just... Hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of things kept swarming us. Our weapons were doing fuck all. Yeah, because we started playing it after they did the update where they said, when you have less people, we're making more spawns. Well, that, yeah, because they it. wanted to encourage people to play as play groups as of teams, four. But why? I don't want to. Yeah, why? Well, you should scale it up the more people there are. Yes. Let people play on their own. Because I played a lot of time on my own. I did. <laughs> so I don't want to play with randoms. Because then you see all these videos about people playing with randoms, and then they get to the end of the match and just boot them out at the but death of the game. But you see, that that starts to stink of pardon me that starts to stink of arrowhead going oh crap 
if we have lots of people just playing one player, that server space that's being used up that we need another three players in with them mm-hmm. to make that server value worthwhile. Yeah. So, well, no, sorry. If you make a game possible to play on your own, leave it as being able to play it on your own. Yeah. Shame, because really, I mean, even that game, you could um, be completely single player, really. Just take it off mm. offline. You could easily do it. But the uh, one last thing on it, it's quite a funny thing going on at the moment where the the robots have got one section away from Super Earth. They're now one section away. Oh, are they? Because the and last time I heard, they'd only got one planet No, left. they're like one segment away from being in the orbit of Super Earth. And there's a big thing on Reddit saying, let them do it. <laughs> so there was a war there was a mission that came out where they they were telling you to go over God. there and stop them and everyone was like no we're gonna do this without even trying because now you can see like each planet had like a regeneration rate of the enemy mm-hmm. and it had been put at the lowest lowest number for the, like those planets in there's like we're gonna do this without even trying all the people that aren't on reddit are gonna do it and we're not gonna help them they'll still manage it because it's just gonna be too easy <laughs> but uh, yeah there's a lot of people they're like let's see if they've made you, super earth can we <laughs> i was gonna say can you imagine if everyone actually just stopped playing and no go on show us what happens if we've got to go super earth yeah that would destroy the game because I can guarantee you they have not got that created. They've not got it created, no, because they never thought people would. No. No. But that's because they've upset too many people. I think genuinely, if it got to Super Earth, they'd probably just say, server off time, sorry, game's over. Yeah, or restart it. Or they would do what they're doing now. They get to a point where they'll just pretend that you're on the back foot stopping it from well, getting in. What will happen? I'm well done, ser- everyone. What will happen is it will get to Super Earth and don't worry, Super Earth developed a super weapon just in time, or that's when they'd introduce the next race, and it would be some sort of meteorite that would go across the universe, destroying all the planets nearest Super Earth for the bots, yeah. and then build itself at the south of the map. But yeah, you're right, they'll never let that happen. I think they're, hmm, let's say, at a fair shake, two or three months late bringing out the new faction. Yeah. Because well, I think had it been two or three months ago, the four of us would have gone, I've still got enough interest. I've got no interest in it Whereas now. Whereas now, if they released it, I'd be like, maybe TJ and I will play it at some point. Yeah. Let the bugs get out first. <laughs> we'll let them release all their shit and we'll come back in a month. That's it. Potentially I'm, the bugs have been sorted. I will start playing it when my TikTok or my Twitter or my threads feed start saying... They haven't fucked it up. Yeah. (laughs) And at the moment, it's daily. I see posts saying, what have they done? Mm. So that will be when I do it. See? Wasn't worth it, was it? Should we talk something about Star Trek? We probably should, yeah. So this is supposedly a Star Trek podcast. So let's talk something about Star Trek. Uh, Star Trek roulette. well, Well, firstly, we'll tell you how we haven't watched Star Trek. We didn't watch Discovery. We did mention it earlier. Sorry, that can be the next one. Yeah, (laughs) we will watch it. It's just, it's been one of those, it's the summer holidays, there's a lot going on. Get over it. We have. Right. Trek roulette. Trek roulette. I've been excited to hear what's going on. So people who weren't listening last time, there's a new game. It's going to, it's... I've got interest from five or six people now. Which is total, amazing. That's so who have, cool. Who have shown interest. And they're not all studio people too, which is quite cool. I'm I mean, gonna, there's names that we don't recognise. Yeah, there's some that I've I've not actually spoken to before. I've There's a few people I'm going to eventually chase. I'm going to give them a long breath because I've been annoying. So I'm going to give a month's rest because the amount Good of people idea. we've got so far, you know, these aren't going to be coming out every fortnight. Like no. Um and you never know, what I've written here may kill it dead. <laughs> oh, I don't know. So what is it? We've got a spreadsheet. You, It automatically chooses a Star Trek series, two main characters from that series, a plot point, a antagonist, and then you have to make an episode. It co- has to be comedy. That is the real rule of oh, it. Oh, does it have to be comedy? No, I want it to be funny. Oh, fine. Okay. Yeah, because I think that... I mean, it's going to be funny anyway, but I think it oh, yeah. sh- I think they should all be funny. So to give you an idea, the one that you chose for me, yeah. and I know we kind of had a little hand in things that got picked because the spreadsheet wasn't fully working. Mm. The series was The Next Generation. Mm-hmm. The main character was 
well i didn't do it as main character and sub character i just did character that's just one, two characters that have to be in it picard and data mm-hmm. plot was sexual encounter <laughs> yeah and antagonist was freddy krueger yeah i had a lot of fun writing this yeah. and that i wrote it in no more than an hour mm-hmm. because i just sat there on some holiday kids had gone to bed and i was just in our little holiday home i thought you know what I'm going to power this out. And I had so much fun writing it. And I've gone back over it today, chuckling to myself. So I've been thinking how we're going to do it. Do we say the episode or do we go through the episode and when we get to a skip point, do the skit? How do you want to do it? Because you've you've, you've prepared it. So I've got five acts and each of those acts is basically us to do backwards and forwards of the speech in it. Oh, wicked. I've actually written <laughs> the five acts oh, of script. Oh, so good. Okay. I was expecting, what I was expecting is you just telling me basically the plot, explain the plot, and then we kind of pick apart the plot together. No, I, and then there's going to be a couple of elements of it where you've made a skit. I, I quite, no, I thought it would be much more fun to make you try and guess what's going to be going on. Oh, this is going to be good. Um, so first of all, let, let, let's go for it. So next generation, obviously... Late 80s, early 90s was the series that it ran. Our main character of that was good old Captain Picard. Mm -hmm. So obviously with Picard, there's so much you can do with him, full Mm -hmm. stop. And the same with Data. There's a lot you can do with him. And when you said sexual encounter, it's like, oh, hmm. Mm -hmm. Is it a sexual encounter between Picard and Data? Ooh, is it? No, it's not. It's not at all. Is it Data having a sexual encounter? No, it's not. It's Picard having a sexual encounter. So I had a lot of fun with trying yeah. to decide what I'm going to do with that. And then it's like, how the fuck am I going to fit Freddy Krueger in? <laughs> Bearing in mind, I've actually never seen A Nightmare on Elm Street or any of the it's films. It's got to be a post-coital kind of nap element. <laughs> no. Oh, you, go on, you guess. Get, based on what you know of me and what you know this is meant to be, what do you think happens in well, the episode? Well, from what I know of you, firstly, I'm going to find it very funny because I think you're very funny. <laughs> okay. But um, it's going to be rude, I imagine, because believe it or not, you're very rude. No. <laughs> really? <laughs> uh, yeah, well, I don't know. There's got to be sleep involved because Freddy Krueger is a sleep monster. Comes in your dreams. Did you know that? I did know that. Yeah, so I know okay. enough about Freddy Krueger, and I've seen right. enough to know what Freddy Krueger is and about, mm-hmm. and I've seen enough of a couple of the films to kind of get a rough idea oh, about know. what does I was like, going to do with does it. Does like Picard like sexually assault Freddy Krueger or something? No, there is no okay, sexual right, assault good. involved. Okay, good. Right, I don't want to have to cut. No, 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 no. Whole we're, act we're not from this. No, there is none of this is going to get cut. Okay, I'm I'm pretty happy with this. I will say. I was who did originally there is a character that does die or is going to die in this yeah she the lady who do you think I would have killed off in in this this that I was planning on killing off I should say oh out so of, one of these characters dies that out, out of the TNG crew not either Picard or Data but one of the crew oh you'll kill LaForge no when you kill LaForge I was really tempted to no, kill no I know you'll kill the counsellor oh dear actually there's quite a lot of people i would have killed (laughs) maybe i should have a quick rewrite does wolf try and fight and lose i was gonna kill wesley oh wesley i like wesley fun fact i didn't know and i don't know if this is true or not you know when he finally gets given a job role on the enterprise basically they illegally employ him even though he's Mm -hmm. underage and he wears that stupid multicolored jumper yeah do you know why he wears that no it's the Every colour of all the departments within the Enterprise. You've got command, engineering, science, red, yellow, blue. Oh. So basically it's to signify that he's an ensign and he's learning the job. And as he doesn't have a fixed role or whether he's going to do science or whether he's going to do command or if he's going to do science... He's got all the colours on show. That's a neat... It's quite neat if it's true. Was that an IMDB trivia? Uh... I think it was a Twitter trivia, actually. I think he actually might have quoted it. So I think there is some truth behind it. So Will Wheaton's a great um, audiobook reader. Yes, he's got a good voice for it, doesn't he? But anyway, I didn't kill him in the end. Instead, I came up with Ensign Gary. Okay. Is he an Ensign? I don't know. I I can't remember what I made him. Um, Do you want to get into it then? 
Yeah, let's get into Or have you got any questions for me about anything? Oh, actually, you haven't really given me any ideas what else it might be. Oh, I don't know. I'm just excited to listen to it because I, I, I'm going to try and give it the shit show treatment too when we actually Yes, please. It, it yeah. really needs it. Well, right, let's get on with it. Accessing library computer data. Okay, what's this? Act one? Has it got a title? Has Act one got a title? No, no, there's no. Have you, oh, have you given the title to the episode? I haven't. I've really just. I should have. Maybe we'll think. We'll workshop we'll, at the end. We'll workshop at the end. I do not want you reading ahead. So okay. you must only keep your eyes to Act one. In fact, hang on. As I did some research, and typically it's five acts, apparently, Star Trek. Or the next right. generation's typically in five acts. So this act is the very first one that the episode has started. You've got a little bit of the blue text at the bottom saying who directed it, and you're into a scene, and we haven't had the da Okay, yeah. I'll have to remember this for when I'm editing it. Okay. So. Who am I playing? Um, who do you want to play? So we've got Picard in Act and one, Guinan. it's Picard and Guinan. Am I going to do an impression? I uh, can't even do an impression I of I can't do an of impression these. of either of them, so. Uh, I'll be Guinan. Okay, so just put on a slightly feminine voice. Okay. It's time to play Trek. Roulette. Interior of the shuttlecraft Hawking. And yes, that was one of the shuttlecrafts of the Enterprise D. Okay. So, would you like a cup of Earl Grey? Picard, you confuse me. How so? We've been friends for many years, and you've never had that issue. Well, since the Borg. No, that's not it. You use your Borg experience to excuse yourself too often. This was different. Picard stands up, revealing Federation-issued leather pants. <laughs> we can... We can try again. <laughs> this is going to be difficult, because I'm going to laugh. Oh, one more time. Picard goes under the console as Guy Nan sets her chair to recline. <laughs> oh, so gross. So he's eating her out, right? Okay. <laughs> Intro plays. <laughs> <laughs> okay, what do I do now? Act two? Okay, yeah, act two. Now you okay. can unfold it and get into act two. Well, here we've got Data and Gary in act two. Data and Ensign Gary are walking down the corridor of the Enterprise D. Data walks to a panel on the wall. Computer, stop program Data 195, Dream and Nightmares. Affirmative. Nightmares? Yes, to experience everything humans do, I concluded that nightmares should also be part of my dream program. Who gave you the content? The Enterprise computer has thousands of records of people's dreams and nightmares. Wait. Those are personal data. You can't just go through people's logs like that. Don't worry. I set my database search to 1980 to 2010. The historic data is valid. Wow, we've got logs from then? Yes, during the 1900s, humans often shared their dreams for others to watch in places called cinemas. Computer. Start program. Affirmative. So bear in mind, <laughs> 1980 to 2010 is the eras that all the Nightmare on Elm yeah, Streets were released, including thinking. the modern ones. Yeah. The doors slide open. Wow, this is amazing, Commander. This bedroom is so, so ancient. I can't believe people had these things in their rooms. Yes, they were not as minimalist as we are now. Possessions often took priority. Computer, where are we? The date is November 9th, 1984. You are in 1428 Elm Street, Springwood, Ohio, United States of America. The whole holodeck shakes and glitches. And St. Gary has gone from wearing a gold uniform to red. Commander, what was that? Why has my costume changed to red? Computer, explain the anomaly just experienced on this holodeck. No error or anomaly was found. Is this part of the program? Yes. Freddy's iconic glove penetrates through the back of Ensign Gary and out of his chest, blades facing forward. Computer, stop program! Ensign Gary's body drops to the floor. A huge hole in his chest. Data picks his limp body up and hits his communicator. Data to Dr. Crusher, medical emergency on Holodeck 3. Ensign Gary is dead. Brilliant. I think the bits you're narrating, I'm going to have to have a Valentino say. Yeah, you're... And I'm going to have to change the computer to the computer's voice. I think so. <laughs> yeah, Absolutely. Okay, brilliant. 
wicked. Actor, oh, like, you can I, be Dr. Crusher, I think. I'm liking this so far. So let's just do a little bit of a recap here. So we've had... So, so Picard's getting horny with Guinan. on a dive in Guinan. So we don't know where they've been, but they're on a, uh, they've are on they been on a sex journey, basically. They've, they've <laughs> been out dogging. We do know where he's been, yeah. They've been off dogging on a, a shuttlecraft. Mm-hmm. And then, yeah, Data has programmed a dreams and nightmares sequence in the holodeck to help experience dreams and nightmares okay where do you think it's going to go before you read any more where do you think it's going to go from this point so he's just killed ensign gary well the thing is you've you've so far you've met all the criteria we've had a sexual encounter and we've got freddy krueger so we've met the criteria and we have three acts left and we still got three (laughs) acts to go okay so i could have killed keiko as well shit there's so many people i could have killed so is this a holodeck mishap and actually krueger's gonna get out Wait and see. Let's find out. Right, okay. Act so, three. Into so I'm Doctor Crusher. Three. So I'm a lady again. You are, and the rest of Act oh, Three. Oh, look, and Reich is here too, Hang and on. Wolf. Act Three extends onto that page. Okay, as well, I said, who are I kind of got a, got kind of lost in writing. So you can be Doctor Crusher and Riker. I'll be Data and Wolf. <laughs> okay, it's going to get different. We could be talking to ourselves, right? Okay. Data, why would you disable the safety controls in your program? We can't just sweep the... Oh God, what accent am I giving Riker? Okay, Riker's <laughs> oh, going to be a cockney. He's going to be a cockney. <laughs> now I'm not going to be able to do cockney. We can't just sweep this under the carpet, Data. I'm going to have to put you in the brig. <laughs> I understand, sir. I shall report to the brig at once. Riker to security. I need an escort to the brig from the medical bay. On our way, Commander. <laughs> that was Wolf, by the way, everybody. <laughs> Data, <laughs> I take no pleasure in this. Thank you. I'm sorry if this has stopped our friendship. Just to point out, Data has said that several times through the series because of his constant fuck-ups he does that they sweep under the rug. Oh, I'm right. really sorry if this has affected our friendship. Stop doing shit like that then, Data. Riker walks over to Beverly and with one swift punch knocks her out. <laughs> Commander, what are you doing? Say goodbye to your friend, you pale bastard. So that's Riker in Freddy's voice. Yeah. I don't understand. Riker peels his face off, revealing Freddy Krueger. I'm your worst nightmare. Beverly explodes into flames and starts screaming. (laughs) Data runs over to Dr. Crusher, but it's too late. Her charred remains stare back at him with jaw locked open in a scream. Worf bursts into the medical bay with phaser drawn. Commander, what have you done? Lieutenant Worf, you must shoot him. That is not Commander Riker. Sir? Riker appears to be back to himself. Worf, Commander is having some sort of issue. Please escort him to the brig where we'll be charged with murder. Commander, if you'll come with me. Worf explodes into a mist of blood, covering Data's face. (laughs) He brings his hands to his face and sees blood on his fingers. Okay, so he's still dreaming. This is still the dream. Act four. This is still, I'm calling it still the dream. You've um, M. Night shyamalan me. You can be Geordie. Oh. And right, uh, I'll be Geordie. No, you I'll can be, be Geor- Riker. Oh, no, let me be Riker. I'll be Riker and Data. You, I was going to do like... No, you be Riker, I'll be Geordie and Data, okay? I was going to do the, the voice from Monkey Dust, you know, the guy on the computer. The... <laughs> no, go on, right. <laughs> In Data's quarters... Geordie, it's no use, Commander. I can't wake him. He seems to be in some sort of positronic lock. Star Trek words. Positronic, yeah, we've got some Trek in. Geordie, I know he's our friend, but how many hours do you dedicate to fixing the fuck-ups he causes? I know, Commander, but where else can we find someone who can fix issues in seconds round here? Geordie fiddling with a cable attached to Data's skull. Wait, I've got an idea. If we reboot the ship's computer, that will disconnect Data safely. Don't we always do that, though? It works, though, doesn't it? Do it. Computer, recognise Geordie LaForge, code 13 Omega 7. Reboot main computer now. Stand by. The power goes off and on again. Commander Riker, Geordie, why are you in my room? You're two hours late for your shift, Data. What is all of this? I was attempting to experience dreams and nightmares. Did it work? Yes. You were there, Commander. You brutally killed our crewmates and called me a pale bastard. Well, that does sound like a nightmare. How do you feel, Data? I cannot say. I find myself hoping there aren't multiple sequels to this nightmare, each getting worse until a complete remake where I skip myself. (laughs) Why did this happen? 
get to the bridge, Data. I've got some logs I need you to delete before the captain comes back. <laughs> Been using the captain's personal 19-inch view screen again. You know it. <laughs> like, we've made Riker such a deviant. <laughs> oh, yeah. And then we're into the final act. Okay, we could right. Who's in this, right? Picard and Guinan. Oh, yeah, okay. you're Guinan again. The interior windows of the shuttlecraft are steamed up. Picard's leather shorts are on the console. A pile of what looks like space dildos cover the floor behind the seats. Where did you learn that? I've never felt so wide. Oh, that's so gross. I've been around, you know. That particular trick was from the Wild West. I remember it well as it was the first time I caught gonorrhea. <laughs> On the rear, I said, by the way, everyone. You got cured of that, right? Each and every time. <laughs> Picard looks disgusted. Guy Nan looks quizzically at the console in front of her. Let me give me a second to compose myself. <laughs> I may not be a fancy pilot, but doesn't that button mean an active subspace link? Computer, show ongoing transmission. The screen comes to life. Benjamin Sisko is sat there watching with Dax, Kira, <laughs> and Bashir. I knew I'd get something on you in the end, Captain. I just never you I never knew you'd like it in your end. Now, Commander, let's let's be sensible about this. Goodbye, Captain. Computer, end transmission. Picard places his head in his hands. We see the shuttlecraft approaching the Enterprise as the credits roll. <laughs> <laughs> so he's getting spied on by Cisco. Cisco's got some dirt on him after killing his wife at Wolf 359. Oh, yeah. Oh, are you telling me? Yeah. Yeah, that's the whole reason Cisco hates Picard. Yeah. Because, because that, as yeah. Lacutus, mm. the Borg killed Cisco's wife. Wow, that was brilliant. <laughs> that was brilliant. I had uh, so much fun writing that. Well, TJ, you didn't see that coming. That was flipping brilliant. Oh my god! I people obviously can't see because we don't record our faces, but my face now hurts from smiling so much. <laughs> all the way through. Yeah. It's everything I hoped it would be. I just, I, I honestly wanted to do the whole. Well, yeah, okay, I wanted to shamalam a ding dong you with the whole. Ensign Gary's dead. Then they're on the medical bay, and it's like, why did you turn off the safety things? Because that's the sort of thing Data would do. Yeah, yeah. And then have it. Oh no. They're still on the holodeck. But actually, no, it's all in Data's head. You could have very easily inceptioned it as well and just kept it going. That's true. A dream in a dream. Because when they do that in the films, they think they're out of a dream at one point when yeah, they're still in true. the dream. They do stuff like that. So you could have easily done that. But yeah, I do like the uh, the guy and Picard stuff with Cisco. It's brilliant, <laughs> isn't it? The, I just wanted Cisco to get his own back on Picard. And mm. yeah, the... That was just kind of that was the least enjoyable bit to write about. I enjoyed all of it, yeah. But it's just like right, sexual encounter. Let's just have Picard get it off his chest and just do guy them because you know they blatantly do. So, uh, just to do some on live live recorded workshop of this. So, I'm deciding whether I'm gonna when I ask people to get involved, whether if people have come and said they want to be involved, whether I do two recordings, whether I record with them give them the thing so they can get the reaction live or if i just yeah. present them with it and say this is what it's giving you and then we only meet once i think i'm gonna to have to do it per person because the other guys that are podcasters we're busy doing bits 100%. so we don't it can be very difficult and i know one of the guys is in america as well so his time zone is going to make it difficult to record twice in the space of a week yeah. so it might be that i just send him the thing but also i'm going to let people say because not everyone's watched prodigy for example so i'm going to say look what are the series that you're familiar with oh it's these three okay well i'll randomly generate it till i get one of those series and then that's yeah, what you get so almost, i'm going to be almost fair like to we people. give them a one get out of jail free card almost if well, there's I, something in there that you particularly don't like or don't feel you could do we'll regenerate it well i'm you. not i'm not going to give you that i'm going to give you you have to just know it 
Okay. So if you if you said to me, look, I only know the original series, I only know Deep Space Nine, and I only know Lower Decks. Okay, then they're the only three that I'm going to let it pick from. So I'll keep randomly generating until one of those three comes up, and then you get what you get because that's the whole point. It's got to be a it's, yeah, okay. It's a it's meant to be something to challenge all of us to do this kind of creative thing. Yeah, fair enough. As an extra, but what also I'm going to do is now you've done it, acting like a guest. I now want you to give me something to add to the list so i'm putting you on the spot here so maybe you can just tell me later but you are now going to give me something that we can add to the pool mm. so either a pro or you could give me an antagonist and a plot point or just one or the other or something that we can add okay to it and that's what i'm going to ask everybody so when i actually contact people specifically about say you know at the end you're going to give me something that we can add to the pool for everyone else a be part of the pool for people to okay. pick from. Well, so then it will keep growing. I've got one for you for plot. Okay, go on. Genocide. Genocide, okay. <laughs> because let's face it, if you get a Voyager episode, that's going to be really easy to do. <laughs> and I'm going to write who it's added by. So when it does come up, we can say, this is the plot point. Oh, and it's been added by this person. The same as when we finally get it on the website, yeah. where people can submit and send us the form and we add it. I'll put, who it was that added it. Yeah, okay. Well, and and can I have an antagonist thing. as well? And you can add an antagonist, yeah. The Chuckle Brothers, which I know won't mean anything to the American audience, but for the British audience, that's going to make a very interesting episode. He's been in the news recently, hasn't he? Yes, he's he's haunted by his dead brother. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah I'm not sure what I feel about that. <laughs> Sad. Command functions are offline. Thank you, everyone, for listening. I know it wasn't what you were expecting. Two episodes in a row, not what you were expecting. Hopefully you enjoyed it, though. And also, if you can come up with an adequate name from the name of my episode, that would be really appreciated. Oh, God. Yeah, we even thought of an episode. Yeah, there's no, no way I could think of a name on the spot. No, not right now. But this episode is just going to be called Trek Roulette. So that's that's that. Spoilers. <laughs> well, spoilers, yep. you would have already seen it. What we're talking about, spoilers for you and me. Um you know, I had every intention to write down all of the things that we're supposed to say at the end of the episode before this, and I didn't bother. So can you save me one last time, please? Of course <laughs> I can. We are part of the Studio Channel 84 network. We are a small indie network of podcasts that includes the Untitled Trek Show, the Variety Show podcast, uh, Who Takes the Socks Off, and Lightly Used. Head over to channel84.co.uk to find out everything about each of those podcasts. If you would like to find out more about the Untitled Trek Show, head over to channel84.co.uk, click on Shows, click on Untitled Trek Show, and you can find out more about us there. All our social media links are also on our contact page in exactly the same place. Those social medias include Twitter, Threads, Facebook, TikTok, Instagram, and everything else that we can get our dirty paws onto. And that is that. The only other thing that's left to say regarding contact is if you would like to email us. If you would like to email Rob directly, you can do rob at channel84.co.uk. If you'd like to speak to me, you can do tj at channel84.co.uk. Or if you'd like to speak to both of us at the same time, send it to podcasts, that's plural, podcasts, at channel84.co.uk. Wicked. Thank you very much for that, TJ. And yeah, if you want to be involved in Trek Roulette, my DMs on Twitter are open. You can message us on Instagram, Facebook, all these places that you just heard of. We will get the message and we'll have a chat. 100%. Thank you very much, mate. Thank you very much. And send Rob Cockpicks in his DMs. <laughs> Love you. Bye. I'm going to rub my chodney. <laughs> Thank you for listening to the Channel 84 Untitled Trek Show. This station is now shutting down and we'll be back in two weeks. Excelsior. Network show. To find more, head over to channel eighty four dot co dot UK now.